Welcome to Rick's Scale Model Fix and a brand new step-by-step -step video build, this time taking an in-depth look at Kinetic's brand new 148 scale Harrier GR1 GR3. Now I have already put up a built in-box review of the kit onto the channel, so if you want to have a look at what's in the box then please do go and have a look at that one. But just before I start the build, I've built three of the Kinetic Harriers to date, the FA2, the FRS1 and the T8. And one thing that I've come to learn is that the fit of the intakes and the upper wing section are crucial to this build. So to that end I've come up with a slightly different build process than what is suggested in the instruction booklet. Um, my preferred approach is to build up the intake sections to each fuselage half first. So to that end, some parts were painted, so we've got all these sections uh, painted up. So it's interesting to note that on the uh, Harrier that the intakes are the camouflage colour, so they were painted up. And the relatively relative splitter plate and the outer shell and inner shell of the intakes. So how does this all work? So basically what happens with uh, the kit is you build up, build up the cockpit tub onto the back of the cockpit tub in here you can see that there's the nose gear bay that attaches itself to the rear bulkhead and then there's the intake, bell mouth intake that slots in to a groove and fastens itself like so into the model. So there's a lot going on there. It's absolutely vital that you get this correct and make sure that everything fits correctly otherwise you can have an absolute nightmare fitting the outer intakes. With that in mind it's sometimes easier to actually assemble the outer intake onto the model first. Now the fit with this new kit is far far better than what I experienced with the Sea Harriers and even the two seater. So as you can see I've built up the intake there that's gone on. There is not there's just a little bit of a mismatch there that's probably of my own doing and that inner shell is in there and what's going to complete that is that onto the bell mouth intake onto the back of that which makes a pretty much seamless intake when viewed from the front. To complete that there is the Pegasus engine fan blades that just sit in there. So it's getting all this into the model so my preferred method is to assemble the intakes first like we've just described. So we're going to uh, secure these pieces on. The fit is really, really good. So we're just making sure everything fits and that it's tight, which it is. And then taking some super glue. I'm just going to add a little bit to the mating surfaces. So you just need to practice this assembly sequence so you can drop these parts in perfectly every time. Once you've got it down to the fine art of being able to drop everything in, you can then just secure it to the fuselage and push it into place. Making sure it all lines up, got that super glue bait. Like so. And then we bring it the outer section. I've already secured the auxiliary intake doors in the open position. And these will simply now just slot in place. There is no remedial work to do there at all. It is a perfect fit. So I'm just going to add some super glue 
dropping them to the mating surfaces. I'll fill the part in and just hold it until that super glue bites. So once we've got those at the intake secured, and it, it's a pretty good fit, we're just going to use some Tamiya Extra Thin on the inside, just to make sure everything is held in place securely. So looking at these, looking for a way in, and we're just going to make sure that nothing runs down the outside of the airframe to our fingers. Just gonna give it a nudge. Like so. So the battle plan is now to secure the intake, the bell mouth in place into this side of the fuselage. We will then add the completed and painted cockpit tub. So it must. Once the cockpit tub is painted and completed, it will be secured in place and the opposite side of the intake with the splitter plate will be added and then finally this will come across and clip in and then we're ready to join the fuselage halves together. So just to recap uh, on the journey so far, using the prescribed method that I prefer, we've attached the intakes to both fuselage sections. These have had the inner and outer areas fitted and painted in the relative uh, colours of dark sea grey for the port side and dark green for the starboard side. As always continually through the build we're checking the fit of the fuselage to make sure that that's acceptable, which it is. It's important with my way of building this kit, not to add the uh, nose gear bays together at this point because you'll not be able to fit the cockpit in. So the cockpit tub must go in prior to adding the intake pad. So we're going to uh, glue the pre-painted cockpit tub into the uh, cockpit instrument panel into the cockpit tub using a bit of uh, Tamiya quick set. And then this is going to be inserted into the uh, stabbard side cockpit uh, fuselage half. I've already done some slight weathering to the internals of the cockpit. You can't really see that much when the ejector seat's fitted. So it's just a little bit of dry brushing as zinc chromate just to try and replicate a bit of wear. And we're going to insert the cockpit into the location cutouts if you like and just make sure everything fits. And again, we're going to test the fit of the fuselage just to make sure it doesn't splay it out in any way because it will play havoc with the fit of the windscreen at that stage of the build and as you can see that's another really good fit so we'll now go ahead and add the other side of the uh, nose gear bay and this is the bit that we glue so we'll just run in some extra thin into there and just along this top joint and then 
working inside we can get everything joined together. So if there are any fit issues it's going to force the uh, nose gear bay apart or the seam will be there, you're not going to see that. So everything is in line, so again we're just going to test fit nice resounding click as it all went together and that's a perfect fit so at this point we can start gluing the fuselage together so we're going to do this from the rear end first and uh, we're going to glue that in sections we don't want the nose section to be too tight at the moment because we need to insert the bell mouth intake so making sure we get this the right way up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, quickly tape the fuselage together. As we don't want to force the seams apart when we've uh, glued it. When we get this intake in, the final part of the intake. So having taped the fuselage together, we've got a little bit of play in the top. And it's just a question now of aligning the location pins into the internal recess in the fuselage halves. It is a bit fiddly. There we go. And that is done. So if you have a look at oh, the intakes, we've now got some absolutely perfect seamless intakes there. The fuselage is still good. So we're going to start by gluing this seam and we do this with a bit of uh, and we're just going to push it in and I'm going to work myself along the rear of the fuselage who's getting the fit making sure everything that all the panel lines on the rear of the fuselage actually meet at the crossover points Got a little bead, bead of uh, glue coming up there but nothing uh, too major the inside seam I'll do up the belly seam from underneath I an idea take the masking tape off before it tracks right the way underneath it start it too We've got plenty of the adhesive in there. And the air brake. This is going to need some slight remedial work there, I think. Just a little bit. Any of this fuselage will pull in from the sides. So we're getting the elastic band on there or something. And then the fuselage seam runs up the side of the ventral strip. And then on the back. So we can get to uh, oops, crocodile clip on there. Turn our attention to the fit of the nose. And again, just running that generous amount 
There's glue along the seam. Bit of finger pressure just to hold it together till the glue bites. And then we'll come down in front of the windscreen. So we're just holding everything together, checking the alignment. We don't want any steps in the fuselage where we go. Painted the frame of the ejector seat black and we're just testing the fit in there. So as you can see in there you can't really see much in that completed cockpit. Just going to work our way around these seams again. Just had a little gap in that front seam um, due to me taking too much off with the knife blade when I was removing the attachment point. So what we've done is we've just put a bit more glue in there and then squeezed it out and it's instantly filled the little divot that I made. So when we come to sand that join In the prep in the uh, next stages, it'll have eliminated the, the little gap. So once the glue's dried on the outer surface, we're going to start to just putting some masking tape pieces on. And that's just to stop the uh, fuselage springing back. So we're using some terminal tape. So we're just going to keep the nose section together. Wrapping it round quite tight. Keeping everything in alignment. And then again at this rear end, we need to just pull this fuselage side in. Nice and tight. And then just probably a belly. Just not making sure everything is lined up as well as can we can we can get. So just to finish off this section of the build, we just need to drop the Pegasus engine compressor blades into the back of the intake. It's worth putting quite a bit of glue in there. The last thing you want is this to fall out or could work its way loose. Uh, during the remainder of the build otherwise you're going to have a see-through intake straight into the bowels of the uh, the model so I'm just going to make sure that this is well and truly glued in and I don't know if you can see up those intakes but quite a neat looking assembly so all I'm going to do now is just add some glue to the contact points of the intakes just to make sure that they are in position. I've got a little bit of play in that one. This one's fine. The glue's dried on that one.
So there we go, that's the first part of Kinetics 148 scale Harrier GR1 GR3 build completed. The fuselage is now together successfully with no filler used anywhere at the moment. We've got the intakes on with a pretty much perfect fit. There's going to be a tiny little bit of Mr. Surfacer to go in there. So all we need to do now before we move on to try and fit the wings is to add the mounting plates for the nozzles on the inside and the kits have a bit of a tendency to pinch in for the fuselage sides so it might be worth just putting a, a spacing bar in there as well. So as a bit of a teaser for the next section I've already been starting work on the wings they don't need much in the way of remedial work and I've worked on a way of improving the fit and once we get to this section of the build I'm pretty confident that I can get that wing on there with no work required apart from cleaning up the seams afterwards so join me in part two at Rick Scale Model Fix and we shall uh, carry on with Kinetics Harrier build so until next time, please look after yourselves, take care and enjoy your bench time.